Louise, what's up? Can you remind us what we did in the last lesson? Sure. We looked at the formula and the graphs of the quadratic functions. The formula for any quadratic function can be written as y equals ax squared plus q. We decided to call the graph of y equals 1x squared the parent graph. That's right. Then we compared graphs with different values for a with the parent graph. But all these graphs had something that stayed the same. Did you see what that was? Yeah, I did. The turning point was always at 0, 0. And why do you think that happened? Well, I think that's because all our graphs had a formula with Q equal to 0. Until now, we have only looked at the effect of A in the formula Y equals AX squared plus Q. We kept Q equal to 0. Let's now look at what happens to the parent graph if we change the value of Q in the formula. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe how changes in the formula of a quadratic function affect the position of its graph. And use Q to find the turning point for the graph of Y equals AX squared plus Q. Time to put your brain into action. We have seen that A causes the graph to change shape. Now what do you think the Q will change about the graph? Well, my best guess would be that Q will move the graph away from the origin, up or down the y-axis. Since that's what Q did for the straight line graph. Good thinking. Let's check. We'll start with the formula for the family of quadratic functions y equals ax squared plus q. We will keep a to 1 so that we can focus on the changes made by adding an amount of q to x squared. Let's first look at what happens if q is equal to 1. So the new function is y equals x squared plus 1. Let's take a look at the parent graph of y equals x squared. What do you think the new graph, the graph of y equals x squared plus 1, will look like? I think the whole graph is going to shift up by one unit. So, instead of turning at 0, 0, it'll turn at 0, 1. That's an excellent prediction. If the whole graph shifts up by one unit, it will look like this. Let's check that by plotting some points on the new graph. Here is a table of values. I have chosen easy numbers for x. The y values will be x squared plus 1. Let's fill in the values of y for the new function. When x is negative 2, x squared is 4. So x squared plus 1 is 5. For the second one, I get 2. And here, 1. This next one is 2 again. And the last one is 5 again. Let's plot these points quickly. So it's negative 2, 5, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, then 1, 2, and 2, 5. That's more than enough points to give us the pattern for the graph. So now all we need to do is join the points to complete it. Hey, cool, I was right. The whole graph moved up by one unit. Yes, you were spot on there. Now let's see if you can figure out another one. 
What do you think the graph of y equals x squared plus 2 will look like? That's easy. The graph will move up the y-axis by 2 units. If you increase q by 1, it shifts up 1 unit. If you increase q by 2, it shifts up 2 units and so on. You are getting pretty good at this. So, this is the graph you will get. Are you ready to make a statement about how the q value affects the graph of a quadratic function? Yeah, we can say that the graph shifts up q units because it always moves the same number of units as the q value in the formula. Are you sure your statement is true for negative values of a? For example, what will the graph of y equals negative x squared plus 1 do? Now I'm not sure. I mean, a is negative, so I don't know if the graph is going to move up or down. Can I plot some points to see what's going to happen? Sure, but this time I'm going to show you a different way of using the tables. Here is a complete table of values. I have used the same x values as we have on other graphs. Then I have completed the values for y equals negative x squared. Now I'm going to add a third row to this table. I have made this row y equals negative x squared plus 1. Do you see that each y value will just be one more than in this row here? For each value, we are adding 1 to the value of y equals negative x squared. Okay, I see what you're doing. So we get negative 4 plus 1 in the first column. That's negative 3. The next one will be 0, then 1, then 0 again. And the last one will be negative 3 again. Now let's take these points and plot them and see what the graph looks like. What can you tell us about the new graph? Well, it has a turning point at 0, 1. And it seems like it has moved up one unit, but I'm not sure. Can you compare this graph with the graph of y equals negative x squared, please? Good idea. Here are the two graphs together. y equals negative x squared and y equals negative x squared plus 1. You were right. Each point on this graph has moved one unit up to make this graph. Does that mean that no matter what a is, the graph is going to shift up? Yes, that's right. So long as the Q is positive, you can check this with a few more graphs for yourself. What you will find is that the graph of Y equals AX squared plus Q shifts up if we increase the value of Q. The turning point of the parent graph shifts up Q units. And this works when A is positive and when A is negative. But what about shifting down? Does the parent graph shift down if the value of q is decreased? Well, let's check. This time I will show you the graphs without plotting points for them. For the parent graph, the value of q is 0 and it turns on the origin. If we make q negative 1, the graph shifts down to turn on 0, negative 1. If we were to make q negative 2, it shifts down to turn on 0, negative 2. So the graph has shifted down by the value of q in these two graphs. But will this happen when a is negative as well? Let's check with the graph of y equals negative x squared. It is upside down, but it turns at 0, 0. If we make q equal to negative 1, then the formula is y equals negative x squared minus 1. The graph shifts down 1 to turn on 0, negative 1. If q is negative 3, the graph shifts down 2 more to turn on 0, negative 3. The formula is y equals negative x squared minus 3. I think we have shown enough examples now to say that the graph shifts up or down the y-axis depending on the value of q. Yeah, we really have checked out a lot of examples. We have tested it on positive and negative values of q. 
We also checked it with A negative and with A positive. But I've also noticed something else about the value of Q. The value of Q shows where the parabola turns, the turning point. Let's double check that on one of these graphs. This one has a turning point of 0, negative 3. And its formula is y equals negative x squared minus 3. The Q value is the y coordinate of the turning point. We can say that the turning point has the coordinates 0, Q for all these graphs. I think we've done pretty well. So far we have explored the effect of the A and the Q in the formula separately. That means that we should be able to put these two effects together. Okay, if a quadratic function has the formula y equals negative 2x squared plus 1, can you explain how the graph of this function is different from the parent graph? Here is the parent graph again. Remember, its formula is y equals x squared. Hmm. The a value is negative 2 and the q value is 1. The a is negative so the graph will turn downwards, not upwards. The a will make the arms closer together than on the parent graph. And the turning point is at 0, 1. Excellent. Let's go over that again. While we are doing this, I'm going to make a sketch of the new graph. Here is the parent graph. Its reflection will be this one. Our graph needs to have the arms closer together and it needs to start up here at 0, 1. And when we draw the graph, it will look like this. Cool, that's just how I thought it would look. Do you think you could do a recap on all the ways in which the A and Q of the formula affect the graph of a quadratic function? Sure. If the a value is negative, the graph turns downwards. It is a reflection of a graph with a positive a value. If the a value is between negative 1 and 0, or between 0 and 1, the arms of the graph are wider than in the parent graph. If the a value is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, the arms of the graph are closer together than in the parent graph. The q value shifts the graph up or down by q units. The turning point of the graph is at 0, Q. Perfect! You really are becoming a maths whiz. Now I think it's time for today's task. Describe the changes to the parent graph of y equals x squared to create the new graph of y equals 3x squared minus 4. Draw a rough sketch of this graph. In the next lesson, we will look at another kind of function, the rational function. Oh, I think I've seen some of those, but I guess I'll have to wait till next lesson to learn more about them. That's right. See you next time.